when I'm six, seven years old, I, I just remember being the adult in the room all the time. So if my brother was getting high, put his bong away. If my mom fell asleep on the floor or with a drink in her hand, I'd somehow get her to bed. Or if I wanted to eat, you know, cheese and toast, I, I figured out a way to feed myself. mission is to end mental illness by creating a revolution in brain health. If I get your brain healthy, then everything else is better. Right. I read your history, I looked at your scans, I've seen your testing, I have a good idea why you're here, and I'm so glad you are here. Um, but tell me your goal. What do you want to get from this? I want to, of course, the Ramsey Hunt was the part that just kind of threw me over the edge. I think I was probably on the edge or maybe over it before. And many people don't know what Ramsey Hunt syndrome is. Do you want to talk about your experience with it? So Ramsey Hunt, I would find out is, I had chicken pox as a child and it stays in your DNA and gets activated under stress, um, et cetera, I think. It stays in our spinal cord. There you go. Yeah, so it stays in the roots of our spinal cord. I had no idea, and, and of Ramsey course when Hunt I was a- is where it attacks your face because it affects, attacks your cranial nerves. Nerves. And so it's like shingles, and probably it was shingles, which is why you had the blister yeah. outbreak. Well, that's yeah. what they would tell me is it went through my brain stem into affecting cranial nerve seven and eight the worst, mm -hmm. but probably five and six as well. And so get to America, do a seven day stay of just massive drugs. But the beauty for me um, was the miracle to me were the doctors and the medicine that um, afterwards, I think it took five days for me to really comprehend how severe and what I was really going through mm -hmm. for me to wrap my mind around it because it's just, it was traumatic. Then it comes out often later in life, yeah. especially when you're under a lot of stress. Right. And you've sort of been assaulted with stress. Yeah. And before the White House, it, it, right? I yeah. Mean, growing up was it, stressful. Your ACE score, I don't know if you've taken that test before, it's adverse childhood experiences on a scale of zero to 10, mm -hmm. this is six, that's a lot. Um, I'm doing a big research project on childhood trauma. Mm. And people who score four or more have an increased risk of seven of the top 10 leading causes of death. People wow. who are six or more, not you, but as a group, die 20 years early because that early stress changes your brain. Right. And, uh, but you've done so many things to be well. Yeah. Uh, my wife, I don't think you've met my wife. She's awesome. Not yet. Um, she's an eight. And we adopted our nieces who are both nines. Wow. And so we think a lot about how do you heal or how do you mm -hmm. ameliorate early childhood trauma. So. Um, talk about that. Uh, my dad would go gamble house off in Vegas or, you know, my mom was the one that ran the businesses. We had toy stores, craft stores. My father was very irresponsible. He, my mom basically has had enough and gives him, you know, a, a, a push of a threat and says, you know, get it together or I'm leaving. So she took my brother, who I'd find out later is my half brother, um, had a different father. She takes, he t my mom takes Mark and I to Memphis. And um, my father comes up one time prior to this, but the night he killed himself, um, he comes up, knocks on the door, and it's thundering, raining, lightning out. And he grab, uh, my mom opens the door, 
and he grabs my hand. I'd never seen anything but a over the top. Um, now I know probably a very manic person, very up like I was. He doted over me, spoiled me. Um, so he grabs my hand and says, give her to me or I'll kill myself. Now there were obviously things I found out in my adulthood that there was history there, suicidal tendencies, etc. But he takes his arm and begins to bash my mom's head into the wall. I'm screaming. My mom tells my brother to go call the police. They go call the police. They take him, put him in the drunk tank. I think he got bailed out that night, which was typical within my family. And uh, he would he would take his life. Our whole entire world changed, not just um, at that point. It wasn't only the trauma of his death, but we were cut off from everything financially. So my mother, because the businesses were on his side of the family, so I was controlled by my grandmother and grandfather. And we went from living in a nice home, or decent, it was nice to a five-year-old, you know, everything seemed normal, never, never thought about food, to fighting with my brother over a bowl of spaghetti or a, you know, a plate of noodles. When I'm six, seven years old, I, I just remember being the adult in the room all the time. So if my brother was getting high, put his bong away. If my mom fell asleep on the floor or with a drink in her hand, I'd somehow get her to bed. Or if I wanted to eat you know, cheese and toast, I, I figured out a way to feed myself. Um, so from that time on, you know, it was just, there really wasn't a childhood, Dr. Amen. It was, um, we moved 14 different times. And why did you move so much? I saw that. Well, initially, my mom um, just going from, I, I don't know the reason whether her looking for opportunity. Um, I'd find out later she, you know, particularly wanted one man in her life that she married, and I'm sure that had to do with at least two or three of those moves. And then when, when her and my stepfather did get married, which they'd later divorced, much later because he'd had multiple affairs and I'm sure they were having an affair when they married. Um, we moved multiple times because then he was chief of medical service corps, got deep selected several times. So we moved multiple times. The only time I stayed anywhere was actually Orlando, uh, Florida. And that was two years, two and a half years. So due to life, due to my mom, due to our decisions due to the trauma we just you know got uprooted and by the time I was a teenager you know I was ninth grade I was 10th grade in Orlando and uh, yeah 11th grade in Danville California and I was so angry at them just like you know no more no more as a teenager I begin to kind of find myself excel do good um, in, in school and sports and other things, I found stability. I'd say up till seventh, eighth grade was pretty tough. Um, but beyond that, ninth grade, I started feeling pretty, well, I recognize it's not stable, but <laughs> stable as a, a completely dysfunctional situation can be. Um, so I, I was pretty angry by the time they uprooted again to D.C. My mom left early. She got a career opportunity. My dad was going to become CEO of Bethesda. So um, that summer, I was 16, and I just remember I had a Toyota Corolla, an old one, and I, I just, you know, we didn't have phones or anything. I drove to Florida to pick up my best friend, and we spent the summer going around the country. I think to myself, like, who in the world would let a kid do that? But that's the whole point. I was never really a kid. So let's talk about your brain. So we do a study called SPECT, and SPECT stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. It's a nuclear medicine study that looks at blood flow and activity. Okay. And I have loved this study for 32 years, and we've done just about a quarter of a million scans on people from 155 countries. So when I look at your brain, I have a really good idea of what I'm looking right. at. And it basically shows us three things. Good activity, okay. too little, or too much. Okay. And then my job becomes balancing it. 
-hmm. And your job is to do it, I ask you to do. Got it. When we look at your scan, you have a beautiful brain for 57. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you have a beautiful brain. It's a little bumpy, and you're not a drinker, and drugs mm -hmm. have never been a big never, thing for never you. Done any. Um, so I need to find out why you have a bumpy brain. Huh. And is that mercury? Is it lead? Is it the infection you just had? And I can make it better. Okay. I think you had a concussion in the past. And I think if I remember your history, you did. Yeah. And you were a gymnast. Yeah. And yeah. gymnasts hit their heads a lot. Yeah. And even if they don't like get knocked out, it's the sub-concussive blows mm -hmm. that can have a negative impact. Um, so I want this to be healthier. Okay. But you're not getting Alzheimer's disease, and I can tell years before. I can tell probably 20 years before. That's amazing. You're not getting Alzheimer's disease, <laughs> but your emotional brain's on fire. It is working way too hard. So if we go back here, this is what your brain should look like. If you look here, anxiety, sadness, trauma, it's the past emotional trauma still lives in your brain. And how could it not? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's not just early childhood trauma, right? right? <laughs> As you set up this worldwide ministry, there's traumas that happen yeah. along the way. And yes. then spending time in the White House at the beginning of the pandemic, which is international trauma. Yeah right and people are afraid and people are isolated and they're yeah. you know the societal unrest so the big three i talk about the pandemic societal unrest the political divide they just caused an international mental health crisis yeah. and you're at the epicenter of it all. of it <laughs> giving the 30-day public service announcements that was a hard day. I got briefed on March 11th, brought into by the president, and he said, we've got to shut the country down. And that was, you know, I mean, it, it just was, it was just difficult in every way. And we knew, you know, also, he said, we need to keep the churches open. He said, Paul, it's going to be the only hope. Knowing we would have, he almost intuitively knew we would have religious liberty battles, but he said, can people be safe in fields and cars, you know, and so I was responsible to report to him for 384,000 houses of worship of people of all faith in America and, and beyond, so it was a very difficult time, a lot more weight than I would have ever thought. Yeah, and there's probably still trauma reverberating in your brain. Yeah. With it. Right. <laughs> I see that. <laughs>
Me too.